Hello, please consider this the answer key to the quiz on standard 6A, 6C, and also standard F6. For standard 6A, it's asking us to solve a system of equations. There's going to be a multiple methods that we have to do. So to get a 4, you must actually solve a system of equations algebraically using your preferred method. So when I solve this equation, know that this is not the only method. You could manipulate these equations and do another method, but I'm going to share one method per problem. The method that might be more obvious. So for the first question, we have a variable that is already solved. We know that x equals 2y. So x is already solved, meaning I'm going to be using substitution because the next equation is not solved. So I'm definitely going to just put this into the second equation. So since it says x equals 2y, instead of writing x, I'm going to write 2y. So it says 4x, so that means 4 times 2y plus 2y equals 20. Notice instead of writing x, we wrote 2y. Substitution. Now I have to solve for y. Four times two y is going to be eight y. Eight y plus two y equals twenty. Combining like terms, eight y plus two y is ten y. Ten y equals twenty. I will divide. 10, and I will get my answer of 20 divided by 10. 20 divided by 10 is 2. I will circle that because I know it's not my final answer. After I solve for, F, for y, I must solve for the other variable. So my next step is to solve for x. Now I have a couple of choices. Do I want to use the top equation or the bottom equation? You have that choice. You can choose the equation that might be easier for you. As a matter of fact, this bottom equation, I could make this equation a little simpler by cutting them in half. Right? Notice how all of them are even. But I'm going to choose the equation that is easiest. So I'm going to use the top equation, x equals 2y, and I'm going to substitute that in for y. So x equals 2y, so x equals 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, so we know that the final answer should be, well, careful about this, right? Is it 2 comma 4 or 4 comma 2, right? So we're going to always write x comma y, so it would have to be 4 comma 2. That's my final answer. All right, let's jump to number two, problem number two. Problem number two, I'm going to notice that we have two equations that are already solved. If that's the case, and they're both the same letter, right, y and y, I'm going to use the equal values method. So equal values method. Another way to say equal values method is actually substitution. It, it is substitution as well. Substitution. Why? Por qué? Why? Check it out. Do you agree that y is equal to y? Right? Like if I said y equals Bob, 
and y equals sam, they're both y, so therefore Bob and Sam have to be the same. It's by the equal values method. I can write it differently. If Bob equals y and Sam equals y, we know that they're the same person. So what I need to do, of course, in this situation is why is this? Why is that? I must set those two equations equal to, to each other. So y equals y, we know that. That's, that's a given. That's a check mark. But 3x plus 7 equals negative 4x plus 21. That is y equals y. OK? So we need to just solve. Our next step is to solve for x. Notice how only x remains. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to solve for x by moving these numbers around. Um, just by preference, I'm going to move the negative 4x to the, to the left side so that I can get only positive numbers. The opposite of negative 4x is plus 4x. And while I'm moving that, I can also move the 7 to the other side. Since I want my answer x equals something, I'm going to move the numbers to the other side. Opposite of plus 7 is minus 7. What that gives us is uh, 3x plus 4x is 7x. And 21 minus 7 is uh, 14. Dividing by 7, we're going to get x equals 2. I will circle that. Okay, so once I've solved for x, now I need to solve for y. Now, you get the choice. Which equation is easier for you? y equals this or y equals that? Do you like the Bob equation or do you like the Sam equation? So a lot of people say, I prefer the Bob equation because... You notice that I didn't really check my work. The is you could also plug the number two into this equation. And for this case, I'm just gonna use a calculator. So follow along as I put the number two into the calculator. Negative 4 times, I'm going to use parentheses, negative 4 times 2 plus 21 also gives me the answer of 13. And to double check, I, just, I could just use the top equation, the Bob equation as well. 3 times 2 plus 7 also gives me 13. So we get our final answer of 2 comma 13. All right, next up is problem number three. Problem number three is, um, if you notice, the first equation is not solved. It's not x equals or y equals. The bottom equation is the only one that's solved. So since we have only one equation solved, just like we did over here. There was only one equation solved, the top one. Since only one equation solved, one of the best methods to use is substitution. 
and I'm going to see that y equals x minus 1. Okay, so y equals x minus 1. I'm going to plug that in for y on the top equation. I'm going to substitute that in. So let's write it. x minus y equals 5. But what's y? Right? y is x minus 1. So I'm going to use parentheses here. x minus y. Instead of writing y, I'm going to write x minus 1. In parentheses, very important to use these parentheses, otherwise you will get the wrong answer. Um, because the the negative negative that's going to really affect our answer. Okay, so what do we get? We're going to go ahead and solve for x. We get x minus x, and then if I distribute the negative sign, I'm going to get x minus x and negative negative one. Negative negative one is positive one. X minus X, that's nothing. And what we actually get is one equals five. Where'd the X go? Right, this is a situation where we're gonna ask ourselves: is one ever equal to 5? It's either going to be always or never. If it's always, it's going to be infinitely many solutions. If it's never, it's going to be no solution. So we have to ask ourselves, is 1 ever equal to 5? All right? The answer is never. So we're going to go ahead and say no solution. That is the answer to number 3. No solution. Meaning, these two equations, they're probably parallel they will never cross. Okay, number four. Number four, we have two equations that are solved. What do we do if we have two equations that are solved, right? Just like we did over here, both equations were solved for y. This is the same situation here, so I'm gonna use the equal values method. I'm going to set these two equations equal to each other. So y equals y, we know that. That's that's a given. Check mark. We're cool with that. But uh, the other thing that's really important to do is to set these two equal to each other. So I'm going to go ahead and set those two equal to each other. 3x equals negative x plus 4. We're going to solve for x. OK, solving for x, we're going to um, get our answer pretty quickly. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this to the left side. I'm going to go ahead and add x to both sides. We're going to get 4x plus, oh, sorry, 4x equals just 4, positive 4. Dividing by 4, I will get x equals 1. Now I have to solve for y. Ask yourself, which equation is easier to solve for y? The top one or the bottom one? Okay. A lot of people would say, I, I prefer to use the top one, so I'm going to say y equals 3x. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in. 1 into that equation. y equals 3 times 1 to show all our work. 3 times 1 is 3. Right. So we can use our calculator just like we did with the 13s. Um, but this time it's just 3 times 1. Very easy. Otherwise we can use the second equation 
and plug in 1. Negative 1 plus 4 is also 3. So the answer can be confirmed. We just checked our work. Final answer, x comma y. So we get 1 comma 3. That's our final answer. OK, next up I'm going to cover standard F6, solving for variables. If you want to look this up on YouTube, there is a resource page as well. But this one is called solving for variables, solving for variables. When I say solving for variables, you can also look this up on YouTube. You can search up isolating variables in an equation. And you'll see other examples. But this, this, these three examples, these four problems, are going to be um, good review, good practice. So let's see. Number one, solve for y means I need to isolate y. I need y by itself. So how do I get y by itself? I need to move everything over here to the other side. My first step is to get rid of the thing that's furthest away from y. So I got to get rid of the minus a. I will plus a to both sides. That leaves me with y over 3 equals b plus a. b plus a, I'm just going to say a plus b, alphabetical order. OK, y over 3 equals a plus b. How do I get the rid of the 3? What's the opposite of dividing by 3? All right. Here, I must multiply both sides by 3. Okay, I'm going to add parentheses there, just because that shows that I'm multiplying everything by 3. That gets rid of the, the 3, leaving us with y equals all this. So there's two ways to write our answer. 3 times a plus b, just by putting the 3 in front. Or you can distribute it, and that gives you y equals 3a plus 3b, which is probably the preferred answer. Either of these two are really good answers because they're the same. All right, number two. Our goal for number two is to isolate m. We need m by itself. So since it says solve for m, I need to get m by itself. This question is all, I'm, all it's asking for is f equals m times a. We just need to get rid of the a so that m is by itself. How do we get rid of the a? Some people say that I must subtract a. Well, subtraction is the opposite of addition, right? Multiplication is the opposite of division. So do we see an addition sign, anything, anything like an addition sign here? No. So we can't subtract a. We must do the opposite of m times a. So we must divide by a. Whatever you do to one side, you must do to the other side, giving us the answer of m equals f divided by a. Since m is alone, we do have our answer of f divided by a. Next question, number three. Number three is asking us to solve for x. Now, for number three, there's multiple ways to do this, just like a lot of these questions. For number three, I am going to notice that both these numbers are even. The two is even. Some people will like to divide both sides by two. You can do that. An alternative way to do this is to distribute the two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show this in two different ways. the most common way to solve these. So 
So the first way is uh, 2 times x minus 3. I'm going to get rid of the 2 by dividing. Divide both sides. When you divide both sides, that gives you x minus 3 equals, cut these numbers in half. 4x divided by 2, that's 2x. Negative 12 divided by 2, that is minus 6. Now I need to solve for x. So I need to get x on one side. I prefer to move the x to the other side here because what's 2x minus x? Just x. I will also move the 6 to the left side so we can get x by itself. What that gives us is 2x minus x is x and negative 3 plus 6 is positive 3. Negative 3 plus 6, positive 3. Okay, let's show it the other way. The most, a lot of uh, students do it this way is because the distributive property is very common. So if you distribute the 2 to the x and the negative 3, you'll get 2x minus 6 equals 4x minus 12. And the same thing, we have to solve for x. Um, I'm going to move the 2x to the right side by subtraction. The negative 12 to the left side, the opposite of minus is plus, positive. So I'm going to cross that off. That allows me a new equation, an equivalent equation. Negative 6 plus 12 is 6, and 4x minus 2x is 2x. Now notice here I have to divide by 2. And that still gets me the same answer of 6 divided by 2 is 3. Two alternative equation solving methods um, gives us the same answer. OK, number 4. Number four, solve for y. That means I need to get y by itself. Isolate y. So I'm going to get rid of the, the 3x and move it to the other side. I'm going to subtract 3x. Giving us negative 6y equals 1 minus 3x. which I can rewrite as negative 3x plus 1, just by switching the order of the, the two. My next step is to divide by negative 6, since it's negative 6 times y. So I will divide by negative 6. Again, don't add here, because it's not negative 6 plus y or negative 6 minus y. It's negative 6 times y, so I have to divide. OK, my next step is to simplify this. So now that y is alone, y equals negative 3x over negative 6 plus 1 over negative 6. Notice how I have to divide both numbers by negative 6. Now, I can simplify this. I could have simplified this before this step. But now I'm going to finally simplify. And I'm, I'm going to get my answer. Negative 3 divided by negative 6 simplifies to positive 1 half. And 1 divided by negative 6, I'm going to write that as minus 1 sixth. And that would be my final answer. Alternatively, you could also write x over 2 minus 1 over 6. Either of those two answers would be acceptable. OK, I'm going to go ahead and flip over my quiz to the last standard. This is going to be 
the word problems standard. Of course, word problems can be very tricky sometimes. So I'm going to have to come up with two equations to avoid having to guess and check. So to get a four on this one, we need to be able to create let statements and also accurately solve um, a pair of word problems at least. So for the first one, um, let's determine what variables we want to use. A local bowling alley charges you $4 to rent shoes and $3.50 for each game. Immediately, I should recognize y equals mx plus b. Cost per game, that's slope. And charges you $4, that's going to be your starting value. You're paying $4. Another alley charges you $7 to rent shoes and $2 per game. Okay, let's create two equations to find out how many games you would need to play in order to both, in order for both alleys to charge you the same amount. So I am going to write two equations. The first one is y equals 350 per game plus four dollars the first equation so notice that X we said 350 per game so X is going to be the number of games that's what X represents uh, Y going to be the amount of money you have to pay. So we're going to say the cost or the price to play those games. Okay, we have one equation down. We just need to come up with a second equation. So it says for the second one, it says it's going to be $2 per game with a charge of $7. Now, for this one, it says, how many games would you need to play? So that means we need to solve for x. How many games? Just solve for x. That's all we have to do. So since both of these are solved for y, I'm going to use the equal values method, as shown before. I'm going to set the two equations equal to each other. Where the first equation was that one. And the second equation was for the other alley. And we want both price, both to charge the same amount. So y equals y is the cost has to be the same. So yeah, equal values method. Let's solve for x. So solving for x, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 2x, 2x. I'm also going to subtract 4 to move it to the other side. $3.50 minus 2. The answer is $1.50. 150 x equals, and 7 minus 4 I know is 3. Next up I'm going to divide by 1.5 or 1.50 to get x by itself. 3 divided by 1.50. The answer is 2. The answer is 2. Meaning for if you have um, $3 and they're charging you $150 per game, then you can play two games or just basically 3 divided by 1.5 is 2. That is the answer for the number of games. Two games is required. You can, of course, check your work to see if uh, they would charge the same. So you can plug in two and you'll get the answer. I believe it's going to be uh, 11 or $13. I think it's going to cost the same. Uh, $11, in fact. Um, but let's go to number two. Hot dogs and corn dogs. So hot dogs and corn dogs were sold at last night's football game. We're going to let x, 
we're gonna let x equal the number of hot dogs sold. We're gonna let y equal the number of corn dogs sold. Okay, so it says the number of hot dogs sold was three fewer than twice the number of corn dogs sold. You notice we're going to use the, the letter X for hot dogs, and we're going to use the number, the letter Y for corn dogs. So this means the number of hot dogs sold was equal to three fewer than twice the number of corn dogs. So let's focus on twice the number of corn dogs. Twice the number of corn dogs means two times the number of corn dogs. And it says three fewer, so that means we have to subtract three. That's one equation. We have to write two equations. So it says write an equation relating the number of hot dogs and corn dogs. Um, okay, we got that one. But we also need a second equation. So it says a hot dog costs dollars a hot dog costs three dollars a corn dog costs 150 150 for a corn dog and a total of 201 dollars was spent so notice the first one is going to be the number of items sold um, and the second one is going to be the the price or the dollar amount so it says uh, we sold 201 dollars the price for a hot dog was three dollars the price for a corn dog was 150 so now we have two equations that we can use so this one which method could we use right one of these is already solved for x so we're going to use substitution. I will plug x in, I will substitute x in to the second equation. And let's see what we get. So we're already solving. Let's see. 3x plus 150y equals 201. Now, instead of writing x, I'm going to write what x is. It says 2y minus 3, twice the number of uh, corn dogs minus 3. And it, let's solve for let's solve for uh, for y. Solving for y, we're going to get our answer in a couple of steps. 3 times 2y is 6y. 6y. Uh, minus what? 3 times negative 3? Negative 9. By distribution. Okay, I'm going to add the like terms. 6y plus 150y. That's 750y. I will add 9 to the other side to get the numbers on one side. Giving me 2... 110 and I will have to divide by 750 giving us an answer for y now for this one I'm going to use Siri 210 divided by 7.5 it's 28 y equals 28 now I said 7.5 is 7.5 the same as 750 let's see 210 divided by $7.50. That would be approximately $3.73. Oh, let me try that again. That's the wrong one. 210 divided by $7.50. I found this on the web. It's not working. So let's try it on a calculator. 210, let's see. 210. Divided by 7.5. Is it the same as 210 divided by 750? Yes, it's the same exact thing. So that gives us the answer of 28. 
28 is y. Okay, what is y? Y is corn dogs. So I'm going to say 28 corn dogs. And let's find out the number of hot dogs. Now for the number of hot dogs, which is x, corn dogs, x hot dogs, we can use any of these two equations. Do you want to use the first equation right there? Or do you want to use the second equation? You could use both to double check your answers. I'm going to use the, the top equation, which says x equals 2y minus 3. I know that y is 28. So x equals 2 times 28 minus 3. Let's calculate it. 2 times 28 minus 3. Oh, I got to try that again. I think that's the wrong number. It looks like a Z. Where'd that come from? Let's try it again. 2 times 28 minus 3. There we go. All right, so we get the answer of 53, meaning there are 53 hot dogs. Just double checking our answer. We don't wanna mix these up because they do cost different amounts. Now, just to really, really make sure we have the right answer, let's use the second equation to see if they really do cost $201. So I'm going to plug in uh, 53 corn dogs, or sorry, 53 hot dogs, and 28 corn dogs, and we're going to see if we get 201. Sorry, I cut off there. 201. Let's check. Let's check if it works. 3 times 53 plus 1.5 or 150 times 28. Press equals, let's see what it is. Yes, 201 equals 201, meaning we definitely got the right answer. There were 53 hot dogs and 28 corn dogs. Wrapping up this video. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day.